4.7 million WordPress sites are hacked every single year. In this video, you're going to learn the second most popular way hackers get into WordPress sites and how to stop them. This is part of a series of videos. The number one most common way hackers get into your site is part of another video in this series, so make sure you check that out. Hi, I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, and let's get started. To recap, in this three video series, we are taking care of brute force attacks and stopping them dead in their tracks, or at least trying to. We're covering pretty much all the bases we can cover. In the first video, we moved our login page so hackers couldn't easily find it or their bots couldn't easily find it. Second video, we limited the number of login attempts. In this video, we're going to disable or possibly disable the XML RPC.php file. I say possibly because it depends on your website and how updated data it is, whether you can disable it. So first of all, let's find the file. If we go into our hosting account, and this is SiteGround, go to Site and then File Manager, it might be called something different in your host. If you have cPanel, it will be called File Manager as well, it just look different than here. You can also log in via FTP to get to these places. Go to public underscore HTML for the main website files. And this is the root folder for WordPress. I've got some extra folders, but you will definitely see wp-admin, wp-content, and wp-includes as three folders inside of your root install or base install in the root folder. The root meaning the primary folder. If we scroll all the way down, we will see at the very end, XML RPC.php. Ever since WordPress 4.4, this file is not needed. But WordPress wants to stay backwards compatible, so it keeps it here because some sites, for whatever reason, can't be updated past 4.4. So they want to keep this file intact and ensure backwards compatibility with future versions because there's a lot of old versions of the sites of WordPress sites out there. And what's this used for? Well, there's two main things. If you have a site that predates WordPress 4.4, this is used to post via email. You might not have known this, but if you go into your dashboard, go to settings and then, hmm, I never use this feature, so I'm not even sure. Writing? Yes, writing. So you're able to post via email if you set this up. And it's super easy to set up and you just follow the instructions and you can post via email as in you send an email to a specific email address and it posts it to your website. That uses the XML RPC.php file. And if you're getting value from this video, make sure you click the like button to let me know and also subscribe because then you'll be part of this great WordPress community on YouTube and you'll be notified whenever my new videos come out. If you use WordPress mobile apps on iOS or Android, it uses this file as well. If your website is older than WordPress 4.4. To find out what version you're running, you scroll down to any page inside the dashboard and it should say a version number on the bottom right. Here it says version 6.5. If you can't see it there, you can go to your website and go to view page source and look for version no, look for a generator. Here, you want to look for meta name equals generator content WordPress 6.5 shows what version you're running. And if you're running anything past WordPress 4.4, you're probably not using this file, this file for anything, and you can disable it. There's one last check you can do. You can go to this site right here, enter in your URL, and it will check to see if the XML RPC file is running. And then if this pings back as all these check marks, then the RPC file is running. If these are not check marks, then it's not even running on your site. And if we type in my website, for example, click on run test, we see we don't get the check marks. So the XML RPC is not running on that site because I don't need it and it just provides more vulnerabilities for hackers to get in, so I don't even want it. So if your site checks out as not using it and you're beyond version 4.4 you can probably you can probably safely disable it <laughs> probably safely so you don't want to come in here and just delete it to disable it all we have to do is add some code to our ht access file there is code you could also add to your functions file the main drawback is 
that's a file within your theme folders. And if the theme is updated in the future, it might undo the updates you made to the functions file, which means you have to create a child theme. And it's very involved for just this one step. If you're doing lots of things where you're editing the functions file, a child theme could be called for. But with just this one piece of code, the HD access file is just fine. So all you have to do to disable this file is click on or right click on HD access, click on edit. And this HD access file has a lot of stuff in it. But anywhere in here, I'm going to go to the very bottom, add some carriage returns and paste in this piece of code. This is going to be in a comment down below this video because YouTube descriptions don't allow the greater than and less than signs. So it's going to be in a comment because they do allow it for some reason. But if they don't allow it for whatever reason, just type it out like this or Google it. You'll find uh, various websites that have this code and you can just copy and paste it into here and then you save it. And now your XML RPC file is going to be disabled. That's how easy it is. And this is a very common attack vector for brute force attacks. So with these three videos in this series, I've linked to the other ones in the description down below. With these three videos, you've effectively eliminated brute force attack possibilities on your website, at least reduced them by over 90%. And so what you've done really is made your site not low hanging fruit. Most hackers and most hacks of WordPress sites are done by bots that go out and they're automated and they try to find WordPress sites to hack. And you've hidden your login pages and disabled common attack vectors for brute force. And so they can't even find your site, these bots. You're no longer low hanging fruit. And so they will go on to the next website that'll be easier to hack. So if you haven't checked out the other two videos in the series, I encourage you to do that. They're linked in the description down below. And also, if you're interested, I have a WordPress security course where I go through way more stuff than just this one uh, brute force attack vector. And you can check that out through the link in the description down below as well. And if you want to secure your site even more, check out this video right here. It's the first video in this series. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.